a half hour and uh, um, and and have been thoroughly enjoying participating in these webinars, not only as a way to discuss the topics, but also as a nice way to keep in touch with those people who are a little too distant to uh, to get together with as often as we might like. And I would add that uh, Nikita is my, uh, is my uh, web webmaster, and uh, we're just delighted that you came in. And Master Michael, welcome, uh, welcome. Good to see you here from Chicago. Yes, hello, how are you? Doing fine. We have finally had winter arrive here. It was uh, single digits today. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, you say mm-hmm right next to that warm fire where you're at. Yep, yep. <laughs> with, with, with well, the high today of 60 something. Yeah, it was really cold today. We got to, down to 60. Uh, yes, yesterday was outrageous. Oh my gosh. Yesterday morning we woke up and it was 30. Two. 32. And it got to a high of 55. I hope you know my. Today. What? I was going to say, I hope you know my heart bleeds for you not. I don't feel any sincerity in those words. <laughs> damn straight there's none. Yeah, that's about the way we feel, too. When there's a minus 40 windshield going on, I am not going to be thinking about you guys. <laughs> well, we've transitioned into the phase where uh, Ava has turned on the recording. So uh, let me go ahead and we all, we start these sessions always by, uh, unless I'm so freaked out that I forget, by the way. So there's always, isn't exactly the word, but 98% of the time I have enough composure to thank Ava so much for uh, hosting these and for giving up her uh, you know, evenings to sit through these. Uh, and just very, very nice of you, Ava, and thank you so much. And to archive all of these things for us, it's just really a uh, labor of love. And uh, so I would go back and I... about changing the format a bit. We've changed the format ever so slightly. Um, the, uh, it's, Jen is going to now sit on the couch and, um, uh, and uh, drink. drink and add yes. comments from a distance. And I could possibly expose myself to you. I don't know. <laughs> um, so uh, that's, about this. that's about all about that. Uh, and I'll again open the session up and say if anybody, uh, uh, Mike and Paula or Nikita Ursula or uh, uh, Master Michael and Angie, if you have anything that you'd like to uh, share, uh, feel free to do so. Explain what sharing means. That means uh, you have something going on in your lives that you spectacular, spectacular works, difficult, difficult works. Um, Master Michael, what's the next? What are, what are some of the conferences you're going to be attending? Uh, well, next weekend we will be making our way to the warmth of Phoenix for the uh, Southwest Leather Conference, full of okay. woo and fun and, more importantly, warm air. Um, Angie will be doing the uh, Dance of Souls for the first time. Okay. And, uh, she purchased me a small hand drum uh, to... Uh, to perform with her with, so uh, it'll be very interesting. Okay. Well, then, of course, hopefully we'll see you at SPLF. Uh, we will be there. Okay. Um, and then the following week after SPLF, we become producers. We're putting on um, our first ever, I guess you could call it event. We are producing all of the state Illinois contests for feeding into uh, GLLA. Okay. So we are busy. Yeah. So you are not going to sin? Uh, no, no, not this year. All right. Well, let me um, – uh, first I want to welcome Master Andy. Uh, we had uh, – uh, Master Andy's down in San Antonio working. We had uh, – he drove up and we had dinner with him uh, on Sunday night. Really lovely. Just – that was a marvelous evening, Andy. Thank you so much. I really oh. appreciate you doing that. Yeah, it was great. It was good to see you again. Um, it was lovely. Uh, uh, so, Master Michael, let me just address this for a second. In the first place, uh, I will be seeing you uh, in uh, Phoenix. Uh, I'm coming, uh, and there's a story there that I'll, I'll mention briefly. However, if Patty 
Faircloth comes on, I'll have to stop talking. So here's what's going on. Um, one of uh, uh, Patty, uh, Patty Faircloth is from Troy, Alabama, and, so, and Andy uh, has heard me speak about him, I think, and probably Nikita and Ursula. Uh, and he's putting on a conference in May called Leather in the Pines, and he has um, uh, Chuck Renslow as the keynote speaker, uh, and Master Susan uh, coming in as one of the featured speakers from Atlanta because Troy is three hour drive from Atlanta. Pardon? Ma ma uh, Miss Susan, uh, but she's the head of Mass International. Uh, so uh, one of uh, Patty's leather family contacted me and asked if it might be possible to get him covered because of his, he has a long history in the Detroit area. Uh, he grew up actually in the, in the gay leather side of the community. Uh, he's bi and has, a, has spent a lot of time uh, putting on a uh, creating a leather family in, in Troy. So I uh, said to his leather brother that uh, obviously I'm not a capped master, so I'm not the one to do that, but I could probably, uh, if he was willing to get himself and his entourage to uh, South, Southwest Leather Fest, uh, that's my sort of a home turf for me, and I can cause that to happen. So the long and the short of this, uh, Master Michael, is that I, uh, if you are available and willing, uh, to witness this and, uh, and uh, participate. Uh, well, Master Trish is going to be performing the covering ceremony. I've written to uh, Bert Cutler and Nadine and asked them if they would join in. And um, Master uh, uh, Dennis, head of the Dragon Clan, is, has agreed to uh, participate and witness. Uh, Vi Johnson is uh, giving us the library, so we just have to find out a time for this. And um, uh, Elegant, of Archer and Elegant, uh, has made the uh, master's cap, and it's a daddy master. So it has a green, uh, uh, a green band across the front and over the top. And uh, the only other person that uh, I know of that has a cap like that uh, is Master Dennis, uh, because Elegant made that for him, which is how I got Elegant to make another one. So that's going on. If you're available, we'd love to have you uh, sit in on that. Sure. Uh, just reach out to me uh, while you're there. We are teaching only one class, so hopefully our class is not on the same time as that happening. Well, this will probably be Saturday uh, evening. So, um, and uh, Vi and I are, are working out the timing in conjunction with the, the people that are putting on the conference. And... Um, so that's what's going on. It'll it'll probably be an evening event. I I have your cell phone number and I'll text you um, if I don't uh, if, as soon as I know. Wonderful. Right. Thank you. Okay. Come up with a subject. Come up with a subject. Oh, something to talk about. Hmm. Uh, anybody have a topic? Well, happy anniversary. First off. He said that uh, this is a new year, so welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we've been doing this for a while, and uh, we have people scheduled out for uh, the next three months. And actually, uh, let me tell you, the uh, Master Dennis that I just mentioned uh, to you at, at being of this uh, uh, event on Saturday, uh, he's doing the next webinar, and he's doing it on a fire blanket. And I really encourage all of you uh, that if you have any interest in fire, please it's attend. Woo. It's woo. It's woo. It's amazing. Please uh, attend uh, the fourth Friday class. Uh, I've never, I watched him doing this uh, when we were in uh, Tucson a few months ago at Behind Closed Doors. I've never seen anything like it. And I will also tell you, I, I have over the years, my years, learned a lot of my fire play technique from Dennis. Uh, I've never, he was the first person I ever saw that used, used uh, gunpowder as the, to make the trail to ignite uh, flash cotton on somebody. And um, uh, Dennis has figured out this way of, um, uh, Michael Anthony, you need to mute yourself, if you would please. Um, and Dennis has figured out this way of having uh, live, Flame, live fire, 
uh, on, uh, on all across this person's tummy in a way that's completely safe. And it's just absolutely magical. And uh, I don't want to give away any of the techniques, but uh, it's, it's going to be one for the books. I urge you to, uh, to uh, see this in uh, two weeks from now. And uh, let me introduce, uh, uh, he still has Slave Mikey as his handle, although he now goes by Michael Anthony. And Michael Anthony is, my, uh, uh, is a leather brother. And uh, I'm, my, I think Michael Anthony is one of the co-producers of Southwest uh, Leather Fest. Isn't that right? I'm, uh, I was brought on as assistant director this year, yes. Okay. Are they well, welcome and thank you. Pardon? Part of the executive team. Right. And, uh, and Michael Anthony is also very active in Butchman's experience. Uh, and if any of you don't know about Butchman's experience, uh, we'd be glad to talk to you about that. Absolutely. And I don't know Kim R-A-N-F-57. Could you introduce yourself? I don't know. I don't recognize that handle. I'm not sure you have a microphone either. She can type it. Oh, you can type it in. Now, that means I have to open up my chat window. Let me do that. Okay, nothing going on right now. Um, well, I hate to have dead airspace. I wonder where Arak got to. He normally uh, keeps us going and hopping. You want to give him a call? Say, Arak, why aren't you on online? You're talking about something. What's it? What? Um, oh, I you're, asked this. You're writing your book on communication. Well, I, I do have a question. All right. Let me ask: Are there any uh, are there any presentations or presenters that you would particularly like to see in this coming year, or are any of you interested in coming back on uh, as uh, uh, presenters? I'll leave that open. Go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'd love to see Raven if you could get him on again. Again, yeah, that was that was fantastic. Okay. And then, have we missed or have you been successful in getting Dan and Dawn on? Oh, we haven't. Oh no, they we had a hell of a time with them. We went round and round and round on dates, and finally they canceled, and I sort of lost. Because they're like they're the the, the crazy busy people too, but. They do tend yeah. to get overbooked. Can I trouble you to bring me a pad and, and... Yes, they do. <laughs> they, they, they run two events, uh, Power Exchange Summit in uh, summer and um, Beyond the Love in uh, uh, late fall. Um, and, and I know that they just opened their new space, in, which is called The Space, in Columbus. Um, and they are very busy with that right now. Um, but uh, yeah, they are they are really wonderful, funny presenters. Okay, I will try Dan and Don and uh, and Raven. Dan and Don uh, are more of a challenge than Raven because of their schedule, but I can certainly get Raven on. And anybody else or any other topics? You know, topic wise, something I've been trying to do, and, and this has become a personal mission, partially because of your most recent book, Bob, is um, raising the bar on the level of discussion within our little community. Um, I've been doing it with the leadership uh, a class that I've been giving um, and, and, and challenging people to raise the bar at their own mass chapters. And, and you know, start digging in beyond the one-on-one topics and, and really dive into, you know, the psychology and, and pulling things out of other areas, uh, you know, such as leadership. Um, so, you know, anything that you could think of that would um, push all of us to either try to catch up or have to learn new things, um, would be wonderful. Uh, so that so I'm sort of making notes. Ethics, ETA, ethics and leadership uh, in an MS structure. Sure, that's one of them. I think psychology type topics. 
um, uh, just things that would raise it from a 101 level to a 301 level type of discussion. Okay. I'm going to keep Michael. I'm going to have to keep you away from Sue because she is, she would keep pushing in that direction as well. Oh, good. No, no, don't keep away. I, I love that. No, we, oh. we well, we're trying to go there ourselves, and she keeps saying to me, "Oh, you 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 know about this. You can do this." I well, the last one we just did, I just did an MSc, and last this year was was much deeper than normal, and, and it was good. I enjoyed it, but it, it's a lot of work to put them together. Well, that raises a question, though. Uh, do would either of you individually like to work up a presentation like that, or would you like a panel, perhaps with Sue on it and Andy and Michael and uh, and Angie? Well, I think it depends on the topic. I think what you want you have to dig into individual topics. Um, the 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 one the one I did at MSC, which I haven't presented anywhere anywhere else, was on understanding how you actually influence, really truly are influencing your slave around, um, you know, to a point in which they're, well, let's put it to this way, to the same as um, the special forces are um, trained, where you're, you're actually developing a level of trust in which your slave is willing to do whatever you say, even though they don't necessarily know where what's going on is going to get them, and 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 have may have concerns about it, but they're they're going to follow anyways. And and really, what that what what you're doing psychologically and how you're getting there. That sounds like a great topic. Um, uh, the title that I extracted from that, Andy, is developing unblinking trust. That, well, we have there's yeah, I forget the title we have for the presentation, but we have yeah we've got a title for the presentation. That's, uh, Would you be can, willing to go on in the spring? Yeah, well, around, we could probably do what in the spring talk about it in the spring. Sure. Yeah, we'll okay. have to look at a date and figure out when we can do it. Um, okay. Uh, you know, yeah. what we really look at is how how do we how do we get our slaves there that they you know when the Rubber hits the road; they're willing to follow you, even though the world is falling apart. And we've dug into that and figured that out. That would be a very fascinating topic. And uh, Michael, do you have something? That, do you have a, a, a presentation you normally do that would uh, would be along this line? Yes, I, I've been giving it at several of the conferences. Um, it, it's on the leadership topic. Um, I, I don't know if, if you would want me to repeat that um, in your webinar. I'm certainly willing to, sure. Okay, well, I'll get back with you. And, uh, and I will tell you, uh, I mentioned earlier about uh, Patty Faircloth. Um, and Master Patty is actually a, um, uh, a um, psychology professor um, uh, it, with a specialty in tests and measurements at uh, Troy University in Troy, Alabama, and um, uh, he he has he has become affiliated with uh, Leather Leadership Conference, and this coming year uh, he's been asked uh, by the producers to be responsible for an entire track on uh, on, on the psychological elements of. Uh, of our community and how uh, psycho evidently will have all the topics will have to do with something with psychology and leadership. So if, if either if any of you guys are interested in presenting at LLC uh, with these kinds of topics that are psychologically based, then uh, I'll be glad to put you with uh, uh, with Patty. I, had, I hate to say this, but as long as the current executive is um, in place, <laughs> I, I, I was uh, well. Sue and I presented last year, and I, I you know, I, I'm quite willing to convey that we, it was probably the worst organized. Considering it's an, an event about organizing your events, uh, it was the worst organized event I've ever been to. Well, 
I have told him about that. Uh, I'm very familiar with that person, and uh, I wouldn't participate either, and he knows all about it. He, he has to make his own decision. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Dr. Bob? I have a long history with that person. Dr. Bob? Yes. This is uh, Michael Anthony. <clears throat> and um, as you know, I've got a, I'm a retired Marine. And uh, so I, I got a little bit of understanding what they're talking about there. Um, and I thought I knew what instantaneous response to orders and all that kind of stuff meant until I met, met Slave Master and I understood deeply what obedience means and what surrender means. And um, so it would be interesting to have a panel and to discuss some of these things that the other gentlemen here are talking about in accordance with what I now believe about obedience, which is not compliance and it's not agreement. Um, it comes from a deeper source than um, just the way we look at things and the way that we think um, and see what we come out of it with. Um, would you be willing to, uh, and I'm happy to ask a Slave Master if he would uh, uh, work on it, if he would participate in a webinar. I've actually spoken to him about it a couple of years ago, and he was uh, willing in theory, and the problem was this was just when he was transitioning Butchman. Right. Um, I'm, I'm happy to write to him directly. Would you be willing to uh, uh, whisper something in his ear that I'm going to contact him? Sure. Sure. Okay. You know, the, the other thing is the, the stuff I presented at MS, MSC is con concepts that Sue and I wrapped around this stuff. I'm quite willing to put it out there and have people provide their feedback and their opinions on it. So, you know, it can be, a, you know, it doesn't have to be me presenting, it can be it can be a basis for discussion and we can all learn from it. I mean, you know, I can always learn more about it too. I, 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 like, the, I like the idea of some kind of round table. I really do throwing ideas out there and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'd be fine. Now we te we have Master Tiano scheduled for about um, uh, three or four months, first weekend in March, I think. Although he hasn't given me a topic, um, so I, I'm just I'll, I'll mention that we've got him out there. If you, if any of you have a topic that you'd like to uh, ask him to present on uh, or to discuss, uh, I, I think he would be open for suggestions. Hearing no words of wisdom and advice. <laughs> so what, I missed the name, Dr. Bob. Uh, Master Tiano. Oh, okay. Sorry, you just faded a bit. And uh, welcome, Master Arak. And hello, Sir Patty. And hope Master is feeling better than he was a few weeks ago. And Jen says, we hope that Master Arak is feeling better than it was a few weeks ago. <laughs> okay. Is that your Santa Claus now? Oh, you can hear me. <laughs> My <Yeah>. God. <laughs> uh, Sherry is here with me. Hello. <laughs> Bless you both. <laughs> I hope your holidays were um, excellent. Thank you. Uh, I think they were fine. We did um, 12 days of um, uh, Christmas. Uh, we had a little bit. Everybody realizes this is the 12 days after, after Christmas. Christmas. And um, she gave me a, a little something for 12 days. And that was very clever. So I've been ordering like mad from uh, AliExpress. And uh, I should, Arak, could you mute yourself for a second? Certainly and, will. And, thanks. Uh, we I discovered um, AliExpress, which is the retail division of Alibaba, which you may or may not know is the um, oh, Mr. Patty. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, you may want to mute yourself for just a minute. And uh, Ali, I'm mentioning AliExpress. It's the it's the retail division of Alibaba, which is 
uh, even larger than Amazon. Uh, however, Alibaba is for, uh, you, ha you really have to order hundreds of something, and the retail division is AliExpress. And I'm mentioning this because you can get amazing things, sex, lots of sex toys. You would be amazed at the sex toys that you can get from AliExpress for practically nothing. $2, $5, $15, free delivery. I don't know how they do this. These pieces arrive. Uh, on our doorstep, and I look at these, and I turn to Jen, and I say, how they can get this in our hands for $3, no postage. I mean, the cost was $3, and they've shipped it from China, from uh, Shenzhen, which is just amazing. But they have all kinds of interesting things on AliExpress. And uh, I'm not exactly sure how I got down this path, but, oh, yes, the 12 days of Christmas. So I ordered a whole bunch of pieces that I'm going to start uh, selling at uh, conferences that are just interesting. And I have no idea until they arrive what the quality is, but uh, they look appealing. So we're about to have the second 12 days of Christmas where I give her a little gift every day, uh, courtesy of AliExpress. Now I will turn this back over uh, to Iraq and to uh, Patty, who have just joined us. What is happening, Iraq? What's happening? <laughs> um, wow, what is happening? I'm working on art. I, uh, uh, you know, the next show is uh, the big show, uh, Imagine, in uh, the Texas University, which uh, were very polite to me uh, the last two years. Um, uh, and I have uh, new pieces and one that I'm currently hoping to finish before the show. So uh, that's basically what's going on with me. Why don't you explain to uh, others what it is that you are doing? What kind of art? <laughs> uh, that's, um, <laughs> wow, okay. Um, uh, the easiest way to express that would be to, uh, and I will type in the uh, website here. Um, thread upon threads. dot com um, is my art website, and you can see it's uh, structures made out of uh, colored thread suspended on screws in uh, multiple different patterns and designs. How would you explain it, Bob? You've seen it. Come on, you took pictures. Wonderful, excellent pictures of my art. How would you explain it? Well, um, they are, are people who are very... Uh, you could have doubled as an, elect uh, as an electrical engineer. Uh, anybody with an engineering background would go for this. They are gorgeous and nice, and they may be this big, or they may be this big, and they may be this deep, or they may be this deep, and they are multicolored threads, all woven into a very intricate pattern, which turns out to be extremely functional. Donald the largest one I did was three foot by three foot. And Iraq, you're going to have to mute yourself. It's hard to hear over the, your background. Um, and yes, unfortunately, we're eating Chinese food, so you're hearing chopsticks. Click, 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 click. Hardly surprised. So, but when you photograph at an angle with these pictures, and I do encourage you to check check out the website. There's, uh, they're really fascinating. Uh, uh, of their really fascinating affairs. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. And he uh, competes locally uh, in uh, art shows and shows locally. And uh, that's that. Uh, Sir Patty, uh, welcome. Would you like to introduce yourself to, uh, to everybody that's here? And I'll be seeing you in the uh, weekend after this. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, Yes, uh, pleasure to meet you all virtually. I'm looking at the list of names. Um, yeah, I'm just coming back from the university. I was running a, a, a support group for veterans, no cost support group. And I just drove back in from Montgomery. Um, here at the farm, we've got a lot of stuff coming up soon. You know, we have um, Leather in the Pines, um, which Dr. Bob will be at uh, presenting. And we've got a lot of great headliners for that. Um, as long as his health is okay, 
Chuck Renslow, uh, the, sort of the father of American leather. Uh, he's agreed to come and be our keynote, uh, keynote speaker out of Chicago. Uh, and there's always something going on around here at the farm that's exciting. I know that. You're going to be seeing Master Michael uh, weekend after this at um, the Phoenix. Excellent. Oh, and then Michael Anthony, played Mikey. Uh, Michael Anthony, uh, you'll also be meeting in the uh, weekend after this. And yes, you should, I should also mention, Slave Mikey is a, a leather brother of mine and uh, somebody who's had a tremendous impact on my life, as, as you have had, uh, Patty. So as well, everybody that's in, pretty many of the people in this room have had a uh, tremendous effect on, uh, on, on our relationship. Uh, uh, certainly, Master Andy and Master Michael and uh, Nikita and Ursula and uh, and Patty and uh, Michael Anthony. It's very exciting. I, I'm looking forward to it. It's a marvelous conference. It's a great conference. Yeah, it is. Uh, Jen is unfortunately not going to be able to join us out there. It is just um, we're just a little tight for bringing her out. It's a pick and choose. We have to pick, yes. And I would choose, but I can't pick. <laughs> so that's what's going on. Anybody else have questions, statements, observations? Well, I like the idea that um, there's a lot of support with sort of taking us back to a cerebral um, discussion group. Our, when we were dinner, with Jen and Dr. Bob, we, we hit on master slave topics and it was a cerebral group. And this past year, we decided, you know, to spread out and do a little more kink topics or, or um, demos or things like that. And what I'm getting from this group is, you know, let's get back to some deeper discussion. Any, anyone disagree with that? The general pitch being that we should go back to more cerebral uh, uh, webinars? We absolutely agree with that. <laughs> but we, we love the thoughtful topics. All right. Well, well let me ask you, let me ask you, Bob, what was your view of going back to more of the one-on-one -on -one general topics? Um, how do you think it went? Because I, I don't think you want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You might want to keep some of those topics around. Unless it was, you know, the, the year didn't meet your expectations, and then, yeah, going back to the cerebral would be great. What well, we found, what we, when we did. It was easier. It was much easier. To do the cerebral topic? To, no, to have other people mm. come in right. and do their presentation. When we had to, uh, to come up with a topic and keep the discussion going, um, it was challenging to be different. Well, when we started, we were essentially doing a presentation twice a month. Uh, we were doing them, and we had to spend hours and hours of prep time uh, working on that and, and doing our going through our own presentation material. So we found that to be uh, a little stressing. And just because we ran out of things to say, we ran out of things to say. So we decided we should bring others in. We had our maximum attendance when we were doing dinners with. Uh, the two of us. You know, they were very, they were popular. Um, uh, however, I also was direct mailing to um, uh, 900 my 900 people out of my own um, uh, power exchange editor at yahoo.com database. I then switched over to uh, using. I stopped using constant contact to do these big mailings. And um, I, I'd given people two or three uh, or four or five warnings that they were going to have to sign up. If they wanted to receive announcements of the webinars, they had to sign up through Ava's site. Uh, at that point, we dropped from having 15 to 18 people regularly to having six to 10 or 12 people regularly. And, and um, the uh, but we, one of the one of the reasons why we switched to have uh, 
broader topics was that we, uh, we, I was constantly running into people at conferences who had really interesting topics that I didn't know anything about. So this became a way of having other people uh, uh, record ca to capture the approach or the uh, technique of particular people, usually that I found at conferences, for the webinars. So they, they served a purpose, but we're very flexible and can go back and intersperse some and tend to go more to the cerebral. I personally prefer the cerebral. I was going to say, you spent a long time not answering Master Michael's question of how did you think it went? Um, and and then, but then you summed it up at the end. I summed up. Some of them uh, were spectacular and some of them were dreadful. And so, even some of those where they, the presenter was lucid, I would get behind the scenes comments uh, that uh, uh, the people uh, watching disagreed with them strenuously and thought they were representing a, uh, a, a very small uh, perspective. But for those of you that have lived through these, do you have any uh, any feedback that you'd like to share with me? Well, you know, Bob, uh, on that side, we all have our own perspectives on this. Um, as I said, I've got material that I present, but that's my perspective or from my relationship perspective and what we've learned from our relationship. And that's what other presenters are presenting as well, and that other people have different opinions on the same thing. Well, that's what makes us a community, and uh, you know we can all get to take, pick and choose what we like from what other people are presenting, and we like about what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And so I think you know I would I would take the I don't agree with the points of the presenter comments a little bit with okay that's fine, but you're you know that that's their experience, and we all have different experiences, and we're all coming together with different experiences. What I found was interesting, actually, is we had a particular presenter on that I thought was uh, just uh, surprising, out way out of the ballpark and surprisingly lightweight. And I got more positive comments about that person than about just about any other presenter we ever had on. And I'm sitting here saying, okay, so I'm obviously uh, an audience of one. Uh, my prejudice has certainly colored all of that one, uh, and we'll have her back a little bit. Arak? I'm curious um, if there is uh, appreciable arguments, and I'm not sure I understood correctly about how you got those, whether it was after a presentation or during the presentation. Um, uh, to me, I think that kind of dialogue, as long as it's civilly done, is is highly educational and broadening in concepts for all people involved. So I'm, what I'm wondering is why those presentations couldn't have those arguments or those other viewpoints brought in more uh, dynamically into the presentation itself. Is there a, a difficulty um, in, uh, and I know I have seen this sometimes, um, is there a difficulty in keeping track of the written comments that you see on the computer and um, uh, bringing those in? to the, the presentation or the discussion. So, uh, hi, so, uh, hi, hi, sweetheart. How are you? Last night, we had a guest for dinner who brought up something that I struggle with, and I'll throw this out for discussion. The issue was, for him, as master, his, he and his slaves had negotiated a placing. Well, this is really tricky. And they, she had just finished the scene with somebody else, and Master thought she needed some downtime, she needed to have some uh, connection with him, and the fellow who, the, who they had uh, negotiated the scene with showed up and began his scene. Wait, wait. So, 
they, they were, he was scheduled to seen with her later, and she's now, just... You came in later in the discussion, you're not, you don't know. Okay. So he showed up and he began the scene, and Master is saying, you know, I really don't think this is the right thing for my play right now, but we've negotiated this, and it would be impolite for me to say something. And oh. But Master, um, Iraq just said, a lot of times it's impolite to interrupt somebody uh, with maybe something that is said privately to us. Uh, for a presentation. Well, How do you guys handle the polite issue? It depends on the context, right? Like, with what Iraq says, um, addressing that directly, you don't necessarily want to bring up all the argumentative things that came up privately afterwards. For one thing, you don't know if those people want to have their opinions shared because um, they've addressed you privately. For another thing, you have the honor of having people come and present. You don't necessarily want to piss off all your presenters and scare them all away, because a lot of the time they're going to be very convinced of their point of view, and they might not necessarily appreciate the, the feedback. And, and I'm going to jump in here answering Jen's question. The needs of the slave, it's all that's necessary to understand there. If, as master, you believe that your slave has a specific need of downtime or reconnecting with you, it doesn't matter doesn't what was matter negotiated, you need to, you know, go, go and follow that particular need and apologize to the person you negotiated with and renegotiate a new time if necessary. If they can't, then too bad. I'm sorry, but my slave is my slave, and her needs are the things that I place above everything else. And I don't care if I've negotiated something. It's not, it's not a dishonor for me to state that, I'm sorry, my slave requires this right now. She's unavailable for that. So, so the words to use as they are, as, as this guy is sort of coming into beginning his scene, and the slave is making all of the sounds of the interested, and you're saying, no, no, this isn't right for my slave. Really, the words that I hear you saying, which are good, is that, excuse me, we need to do this at a different time. My slave needs something else right now. Master Michaels had his hand up a couple of times. So okay. I, I want to add more information to, to this uh, because it's a, a rich topic. But I think Master Michael has something to say uh, that's relevant here. So go ahead, Master Michael. <laughs> um, only three things. Um, first off, um, I can speak for having had one of these topics where I was um, extremely um, keeping my mouth shut. And <laughs> I did that out of respect for our hosts. Um, because I didn't feel it was appropriate to look at the guy and say, you're speaking for an hour on something that is so blindingly obvious to anyone that's been in a power dynamic relationship for 10 minutes. Um, but leading into my second point, having returned from Australia, they have a culture where they look at everybody as equals. And they are extremely aggressive about challenging presenters. Um, I, I started talking, and within five minutes, um, I was hanging on for dear life because I had never had such a dynamic and interactive audience who challenged me every single step of the way. And it was good. After I came out of that, I had a drink, and I loved it. Um, I think we in America, we're so used to sitting down in our seats, listening, and not, not being encouraged to interact. Um, I think it's habit. Um, and my third point is what I would say to Jen, your friend, is a very simple statement. You are the master. You make the decisions, not Joe Blow who's come in and negotiated a scene. 
I think that's very valid. Yeah, he has he has a lot of the same issues that I have with um, being appearing to be overly dominant and impolite. Yeah, this, this, this particular person uh, suffers from uh, being a psychologist by uh, by training, um, and so he's weighing this and weighing that. Uh, he does not come across as particularly, uh, he's not macho at all, uh, and, but he's a very competent owner. The problem... It, it, it's not about being macho. Your master, they are slaves. But, End of story. What, what? But, but perception is that other guy felt as though he could overstep correct. the master's boundaries that's because correct. he's not overly macho. That, that's correct. And, and <laughs> this was compound, the reason this got, this was messy uh, Master Michael, because um, the, the because slave was still floating from just having come off of a scene. And the fellow that's going to play her was a powerful and known master. Right. So she's coming, she's floating off of the scene. They're walking away from the scene. The person she's supposed to play with a little later comes in and says, oh, well, you're free now, let's go, and throws her against the wall. Uh, and she did not exhibit any signs to she this all came up in the context of how do you signal and that was our discussion last night how do you signal when something's going wrong that's uh, that's at a relationship basis and her problem was she couldn't they hadn't worked this out before well she couldn't because she was floating she was floating and couldn't and, do that and then she was in such a panic that right. she went into she safety. she withdrew Ma master michael uh, I'll get to your uh, my 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 question is for Mr. High and Mighty Negotiated Master. Where is your sense of protocol in going to the uh, person's owner and saying is now an appropriate time? I would not walk up to somebody else's uh, property and just begin, even if I've negotiated without some sense of respect to the owner. I don't care how new they are, how old they are doesn't matter, and this is part of the manners that I think are lost, and this is why I don't like playing with others, because a lot of people just don't have a freaking manners from kindergarten. I'll get off my soapbox now. Really like that was really good. That was very important to hear. That was really good. Um, uh, okay, Master Iraq, you go ahead, but I'm making notes from what Master Michael said. Understood. <clears throat> Coming from Los Angeles, I, I have to say that I have seen in that community, and it, it is around other places, I, uh, but in Los Angeles I find it's overly prevalent, and that is um, people work very hard to get a uh, good uh, powerful uh, reputation in the community. Um, and I, I don't mean that in necessarily a positive way. I'm saying uh, to work very hard to get a reputation as uh, a popular or a, a, a really masterful master, a, a real strong leader, somebody who is been involved in a lot of clubs, ran a club, uh, owns a club, uh, has multiple uh, slaves, and they get this reputation, and along with it, they feel that gives them the ability to take steps that a lesser master wouldn't have, like asking, like being polite, like going in and saying, uh, I would like to have a scene with your property. How would you like that to go about? Um, uh, I have seen so many people work very hard to get to the point where they could be master of masters. And I find that to be... Um, Ah, sorry. It gets me very angry. I, I find that, um, to go back to some things that Jen remarked on, politeness 
is very pertinent. It is manners, how you behave towards another master, whether they are, even if, if they are not necessarily someone that you would respect, you can model the appropriate behavior to them. You can model how do you go about talking to a master about his property. Um, sorry, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm fine. Uh, Nikita, uh, I'm just uh, <laughs> I was just going to say to Master Iraq there, it's very, very disrespectful, um, that kind of level of courtesy. And it's like you said, even if you don't respect the person, you need to respect the service that they are giving. They are providing a master service. And you need to respect that and respect their property. But um, I was agreeing with completely with Master Michael that the, what the master says is what goes. People try to sidestep myths all the time around me and try to play with me. And it's never, it's just, it's not even going to happen. It doesn't even go there. But if I was high, if I was just, you know, coming down from my endorphin rush, I'm quite sure that I wouldn't know which way was up or down. But myths would definitely step in and politeness be damned. Um, yes, well, uh, there's a, lot, there's a lot more experience. Nick, 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 yeah, these are a new, a new couple. They've, new by they're, a year. They're, yeah, they're within a year. They're six months in, and um, nobody's going to mess with Nikita. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, uh, Michael Anthony. Uh, Master Michael, hold on. Um, Michael Anthony, go ahead. Yeah, um, just kind of echo the feelings there. As as a slave, if 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 my master didn't step in and. Uh, um, take charge of that situation immediately, there would be no trust or no uh, um, feeling of I'm their property anymore. I, I like It's totally unrealistic for me to, to even imagine a situation like that. Um, if, there, if I were going to play with someone, it would be negotiated by my master and my master would make sure that it's set up by the master because I only have one master and and whatever the master says is is what I do um, to me there is no other master out there there's 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 lots of other people that I have a lot of respect for but that has to do with how they um, carry themselves but I only have one master you know, what I like about what you just said to me, Michael Anthony, you, you may not know that you've said it, is you only have one master, even above politeness and courtesy. You're going to follow your master. Right, Am yes. I yes, yes. Um, like I said, there, there, there are a lot of people who, and my, my own master will say it, that I'm a master in my own right. Um, but I choose to submit and to give all the power that I have to her and no one else is entitled to that power. Now, if she redirects my power to use it in some way, whether I'm service topping or whether she wants to see me in a scene with someone else, she does that negotiation for me because yeah. she's, she's my master and she's the one I give my power to no one else. But in this relationship, to this fellow, um, a year into his mastery, really just beginning his path, the answer is politeness does not master you over your responsibility as master of this relationship. Yes, that's marvelous. And for those of you that are listening, um, uh, that what Slave Mikey, what, what Michael Anthony has just been saying, uh, is exactly. The conversation is why he's in my life. It's the, this is the conversation. Uh, Michael Anthony was the first person that was clearly that I, that I ever recognized as clearly being a dominant slave. And this was an, uh, a, a, for me a completely cataclysmic uh, um, uh, observation when we when we first met. 
and it's exact and uh, slave and, and Michael Anthony and I uh, look at every look at this relationship structure and uh, very 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 similarly. And I completely concur with everything that you just said, Michael. That was eloquent, of course. Thank you. Thank you, and, and Dr. Bob, I'm going to have to get off this call because I got to get on the sin in the city. Um, call uh, and planning that uh, one as I'm the volunteer coordinator for Sin in the City. So I'm sorry to leave, but I got to run. See you, see you next weekend. All right. See you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And then, Michael, you had your hand up. I just wanted to add one last thing for Jen to encourage um, your friend is that um, above politeness, he has the responsibility to be the connection to the outside, and it's a very powerful way to actually explore and deepen your dynamic. Um, they can start to approach it as an exercise of where she gives up uh, that, I guess, effort and turns it over to her master, to where he will be the one conducting those negotiations. He will be the point of contact in the future, and he will be the point of contact for that when someone is ready to begin play. They don't go to her. They go to him. Mm -hmm. That's vital. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, we are at 8.57. Uh, we actually have the capability of closing this down uh, within the hour. Does anybody... Uh, would anybody like to add anything at this point? On any topic. On any topic whatsoever. Hearing no comments at two minutes to uh, nine, my time. I would say thank you all so very much for joining. This was just delightful. I really appreciate it. And once again, we got off to a little bit of a slow start, but there's really good material in here. I, I love lying here over on the sofa, still in my scrub, just relax. This, Didn't this have to put with, on makeup. This thing, this thing with Dr. Bob and friends is really going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Master Michael, uh, feeling is uh, very much returned. Thank you uh, so much for uh, coming in, every one of you. Uh, Master Andy, uh, just was lovely seeing you on Sunday. Look forward to the next time you can visit. Uh, uh, Master Iraq, I will see you around town. Uh, Master Michael, see you next week, weekend after this. Mike and Paula, thank you very much for joining in. Nikita and Ursula, hugs and love. Big help. Patty, see you weekend after next. Night-night, everybody. Thanks. Hope to see you soon.